Hey, welcome to This Is Not A Podcast. It's not exactly a live stream. Um, this is just my thoughts with Rob Markman. That's the name of the show, right? <laughs> uh, yo, man, y'all know I uh, used to have my show at Genius for the record. Um, was on Amazon Rotation Roundtable last year. That show no longer exists. But, you know, I'm doing what I love to do. Still love to talk hip-hop. Still love to talk about the music. Um, I'm here recording myself. Um, I'm editing this myself. I'm posting this myself. Uh, there's no form to it. This is just what it is, man. But definitely got to talk about Kendrick Lamar. Uh, you know, after years of the, the back and forth, the subs, um, he went to the point of no return um, when he dropped his verse. He didn't exactly name la- names, but it was it's pretty clear. It's pretty direct who he's talking about. We're like, we're not guessing here. We're not making this up um, on future Metro Boomins like that. So, you know, I just wanted to talk about it, dissect this thing a little bit. This is what we love to do, you know. On the track, Kendrick says, motherfuck the big three, it's just big me. Which, you know, if you just connect the bars, it's a response to Drake and J. Cole drop first person shooter. And, you know, first of all, I thought that was a dope moment last year because it landed number one on the Billboard Hot 100. A, a pure rap song landed number one. So I, I think first person shooter was an incredible moment, especially in a year when, you know, people were saying hip-hop wasn't doing as well. We didn't have the chart success. For them to have a pure rap song land, number one, that's dope. But so, you know, Kendrick says, motherfuck the big three is just big me. That That's, of course, like a response. You know, Cole says on First Person Shooter, love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K-Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started the league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. You know, look, that's the way Cole's, but I think that's the way any MC is supposed to feel. That's not too different from me when Kendrick dropped Control. I just don't know what the, the, the fuss is about. But, you know, Kendrick feels a way and, and, and his right to, and, and he's definitely on the offensive right now. We're going to get into the diss. We're going to go line by line. But I want to take some time just to talk with y'all about how we got here, right? Like the timeline to this whole thing, you know. Going back 2011, you know, right after Section 80 dropped, if y'all remember, if y'all was around, if y'all was listening to music or if y'all was outside, like they say, Kendrick got his own solo track. He got his own interlude on Drake's Take Care. That was a classic album. The solo track was dope. You know, it it was like an arrival for Kendrick. You know, this is shortly after the Dr. Dre co-sign. Like, it's just clear Kendrick's trajectory is up. And Drake has always done an amazing job at aligning himself with who's next and i think that that's beneficial for the artist you know be it the migos when he jumps on versace be it tony montana when 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 drake jumps on um futures joint is it's beneficial for the artist but it's, it's also beneficial for drake 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 has just aligned himself for years and years and years and years knowing what's next knowing what the next wave is and, and attaching himself so i think it's a mutually beneficial thing right um so after take care you know kendrick goes on tour with drake in 2012 for club paradise um drake that same year jumped on poetic justice off a of good kid mad city you know also it was said that that drake had fucking problems and they sent that to kendrick for good kid but kendrick didn't feel like it felt right for his album and a year later, or a couple months later, in 2013, that song ends up with ASAP Rocky. But both Drake and Kendrick are still on it. Doesn't seem like we have a problem yet, right? Doesn't seem like anything's going on. Um, then August 2013, we get Control, right? Big Sean's Control with Dot's classic verse that just shook stuff up, right? What he said, I'm usually homeboys with the same as I'm rhyming with, but this is hip-hop, and this should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit, Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J. Electron, Tyler, Mac Miller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you, trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you, that they don't want to hear not one more noun or verb from you. And, and that, that shook stuff up. Kendrick was, of course, naming names. Like... For me, of course, this was direct, but I, I I just felt like people overreacted to this. I, I think this is how rappers feel. I think this is how they're supposed to feel. I think this is what they talk about when nobody's listening. But Kendrick just said the 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 quiet part loud, as as they say, right? Now, 
Of course, some people re- responded. Big Crit responded. Big Crit had a dope response. Um, you know, a couple people responded, but uh, most of the people on the list didn't really take this. I, you know, I guess Big Sean felt the way that this is almost at the root of Kendrick and Big Sean thing. Um, I don't think Meek really felt the way. I don't think Pusha felt the way. I don't know if Wale felt the way. I, uh, rest in peace to Mac Miller. I don't know if Mac or Tyler felt the way. I mean, this is just rapping. This is how you're supposed to feel. Um, and, you know, Drake does an interview with Billboard shortly after. I'm going to read this quote. He said, it just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well that Kendrick's not murdering me at all in any platform. So when that day presents itself, I guess we can revisit the topic. Feels like that day is presenting itself, right? Feels like we're about to revisit the topic. That's why we're here. Um, you know, but then Drake goes on and drops nothing, was the same a little while after Control. And we all kind of felt that he was throwing shots at Dot on the language where he says, I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. Bank account statement just look like I'm ready for early retirement. Fuck any that's talking just to get a reaction. Fuck going platinum. I look at my wrist and it's already platinum. Um, again, the sub could have been like the energy felt like it was, but also only Drake really knows. Maybe only Kendrick really knows. Like anything that Drake would have said at that point, we would have latched on to. Like this is a response. That's just how it works, right? Um, so it's all unconfirmed, but you know the language feels like a response to control in, in a very subliminal sort of way, right? Um, you know, you know, I I will give like just something that I had learned through the years. Also, going back to nothing was the same. Started from the bottom. Now there was some feeling around the time, you know, I had heard some rumblings that that Kendrick's team felt that Drake was throwing shots or getting at them on started from the bottom and this is something that people never really talk about publicly or connected but when he said um you know the the whole fuck a fake friend where your real friends at no we don't feel that fuck a fake friend where your real friends at i don't get the correlation you know i don't i don't get how that's about kendrick but you know that could have been something that just they know about their relationship um but it kind of tracks because if you fast forward to 2015 to King Kunta, there's an early version of that song which correlates to the friend line. Like when we hear it, it's like true friends. One question, bitch, where were you when I was walking? Like it, it just feels like it connects back to started. But unless you knew there was an issue there and at that time we didn't really know, you don't really connect those two things, right? It's pretty like ambiguous but then of course on king kunta there's the ghost rider line right um a rapper with a ghost rider (laughs) like which again we didn't know when king kunta dropped nobody knew that that could be about drake and then shortly after you know it starts to make sense when meek mill revealed that drake and quentin had the relationship where quentin was writing records for drake so you know you start backtracking and connecting these dots but at the time like we wasn't sure and it was still kind of super subliminal that none of this is direct um, going back to 2013 too, we also had the BT cipher, you know, when Kendrick said, and nothing's been the same since they dropped control and tucked the sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Again, there was a whole list of people probably was about to Drake, but subliminally, like, like we still don't know. Drake also did an uh, interview with Elliot Wilson that year for his crown series. And I'm just going to read this quote. This is about the control verse. He said, I know that verse had no malice behind it. Because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. He didn't come in there on some wild, I'm in New York, fuck everybody, don't look at me. It was one of those things. I almost wish he had come there on that shit because I kind of lost a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really fuck everybody, then it needs to be fuck everybody. It can't be halfway for the sake of the people. Uh, so, you know, that that's Drake's feelings on it at the time. Again... I didn't think control was that. Again, he just said the quiet part out loud. When when Drake gets in the booth, he feels the same exact way. I'm trying to be the top guy. I'm trying to murder everybody. You're not going to outwrap me on my, my own thing, especially back in those days when they were still really, really trying to establish their dominance. Um, and then how does Cole, Cole play into this, right? The, the thing that didn't play out publicly is, you know, I believe Cole felt the way too. You remember VMA night? When Diddy and Cole got into their altercation at a MTV after party. Now, I was working for MTV at the time. I was at the VMAs. That was the year I was at the Barclays. Um, 
And at that party, there was a lot of discussion about the control verse. You know, the whole industry is talking about it. And, you know, there were people trying to stoke the fire um, between Kendrick and everybody, just trying to kind of egg it on. And, you know, as far as we know, even at that point, there's no real issue between Kendrick and Cole, but I do believe it was the, a discussion that night. Like, yo, like, you really feel like that? Or, you know, something to that effect. Like, I feel like it's something that they definitely talked about. Because these guys have a relationship, too, that dates back um, to the XXL freshman cover. Um, I worked at XXL at the time at the, at the shoot, the 2010 shoot when Cole was on the cover. Kendrick was there. Um, Cole produced High Power for Kendrick. I mean, they're doing records. They're talking about a collab project. And there's a real relationship there. I believe that, that, that there was a friendship or at least like a really, really strong camaraderie, right? Because it kind of seems like Kendrick keeps his circle small. Doesn't look like a whole lot of rap friends. Um, he drops his album and and does his real life stuff. So, you know, I can't speak to his rap relationships. But with him and Cole, it, it felt like a friendship. If, if not, you know, I can't speak for them, but... Definitely a camaraderie, like a real strong camaraderie. You know what I'm saying? Still, you know, you fast forward to 2014 at the OVO Fest, and Drake still is downplaying any beef or resentment. And maybe he, he just doesn't feel that way. Him and Cole on stage, and um, Kendrick has said, I mean, Drake has said, Kendrick, Kendrick was on my album. We went on tour. It's one of the hardest dudes alive. He should be standing right here. There's a lot of kings in this shit. So shout out to Kendrick and shout out to my brother, J. Cole. You know, that's that's giving that big three energy that we're talking about, right? The three top guys in this game, at least, of this era, Kendrick, Cole, and Drake. So, you know, this is Drake, like, feeding into that at the OVO Fest. Now, look, through the years, there were a lot of subs and back and forth, um, a lot of speculation. But it's like nothing really concrete. Nothing sticks, like... Really nothing to jump out the window about. And if you look at it, this is just how beef plays out. Like in hip hop, Jay and Nas, before we got Takeover and Ether, there, there were a couple of subliminals that we found out later. A lot of people ain't know Hove and Mace was beefing until years later. Um, you know, Pusha and, and Drake, that dragged on for a couple of years. Little sub shots there, little sub shots here before that escalated into a full thing. So a lot of times in rap beats, it'd be the little back and forths that most fans don't really catch. Like they might speculate, but nobody could really, really put their finger on, right? Um, so, you know, I want to just fast forward, right? So that's just a little bit of the background, but first person shooter drops and, and it's very clear at this point that Cole is staking his claim. To me, again, that's what the MC is supposed to do. That's what Kendrick did on Control. So, you know, when when... Cole is like, you know, they debating my numero, not the three, not the two. I'm the UNO. Like, he's supposed to say he's the one. And Cole at times had said, uh, I forget the exact lyric, but he had said that, you know, he wasn't number one. He's probably number two or number three. Like, or at least that's what the perception of him was. But, like, at this point, Cole is rapping at a high level. He's saying, nah, I'm I'm, I'm the guy. I'm the one. Um, you know, love when they argue the hottest MC. Is it K-Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three, like we started the league, but now I'm feeling like Muhammad Ali. Like, it's not that different from from control. I don't know if Kendrick took that as a diss and if those bars exactly spurred this on, but to me, that's the way Cole is supposed to feel, and he's earned that right. Um, and Cole didn't try to downplay it either. When he was on Yadi's podcast, you know, they talked about the competitive spirit when getting on the track, and, and Cole was open about being very competitive. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. That's why he's great. That's why we love him. Um, but I want to go and and start breaking down this Kendrick verse on like that. First, I don't think it's any coincidence that it's on Future and Metro Boomer's album. I mean, you also got to consider the back and forth between Metro and Drake, right? Metro leaving Drake off a trance from the Heroes and Villains album. And then Metro's tweet about her loss winning awards over Heroes and Villains. Um, you know, then Drake, you know, the Drake video is funny that the tweeters and the leaders comment was pretty funny. You know, there was some subs, some IG story captions. So they're, they're, that's a whole other video, right? That's a whole other thing. But there's, there's a back and forth going on between um, Metro and, and Drake um, and maybe Future 2. But I, I don't know. Again, like I heard the first track, We Don't Trust You, and that second Future verse. Sounds like he's talking about somebody. I haven't I haven't really, really dived in, so, so I can't say for sure. But, you know, it, it'll be 
weird if like all of this is going on on the future and, and Metro album and, and future is, is neutral in Switzerland. I, you know, I don't know. So, but you know, I'm not going to put that on him unless like I really hear it or see it for myself. But it, it does seem like um, hip hop is choosing sides right now. Right. So to speak, um, it might be something there, but let's not get off track. You know, I, th- I think that's taking us off track a little bit. Um, just want to talk about this Kendrick verse. I just want to go through it. Um, you know, um, talking out they next. Don't pull no coughing out your mouth. I'm way too paranoid for a threat. You know, he's just setting it up, talking about he wants his respect, money, power, respect. He wants his respect. Goofy's with a check. I mean, maybe that could be a shot. That's like that could be anybody. But you know, sounds like he, you know, he's going at at, at Drake or he's just setting the tone, right? Um, this part is, is is key to me. My temperature bipolar. I choose violence, right? He said, oh, man, I hope them sentiments symbolic. My temperature bipolar, I choose violence. Okay, let's get it up. It's time for him to prove that he's a problem. You know, the choosing violence part. I mean, there's a lot of this again because Drake has downplayed this after control so many times. I I, I think, you know, some people might say he'd been ducking smoke. You know, I, I talked about wanting to see the three of them collab I, th- I thought that would be more interesting i made a video about that in the beginning of the year and i got it from a source that's connected to one of those three camps that said the collaboration was very close to happening it just didn't happen this particular go round. um so it feels like maybe there was like recent talks of a collaboration or semi-recent talks that that just didn't happen um but, you know, Kendrick says, I'm bipolar, I choose violence. Um, Kendrick is the aggressor here. I, you know, I think Kendrick is the villain here. And I think he's okay being the villain. Like, I'm not saying he's a villain without cause. Like, maybe something happened that made him feel this way. I'm sure something happened that made him feel this way. And it, now he's just owning it and going on the offensive. Even, even control. Like, he could have played it quiet and diplomatic. On control, he chose violence. Again, I don't think that people should have been offended as at control as, as some people were. But, you know, Kendrick is pushing the line. He he chose violence is, is what he's saying. Um, so this is him, like, owning to me. This is him owning the villain of this. He says, yo, they clicking up but cannot be legit. Cannot be legit, no 40 water. Clicking up, it cannot be. Le- Yo, shout out to E40. Shout out to be legit, the click. That's just dope wordplay. Giving um some love to some pioneers, E40, the click, sprinkle me, sugar tea. Yeah, I remember, come on, man. Um, and but clicking up is also first person shooter. Seeing seeing Drake, I guess, who who is the ops, seeing Cole, who I think they were cool, but maybe now he's the ops together. Yeah, they clicking up, but cannot be legit. So to me, that that's a that's a shot. That's aimed at both of them, right? Um, you know, a couple of lines later, and, and just like in case you were wondering, right? Then he says, fuck sneak dissing, first person shooter. I hope they came with three switches. Like, it's clear. And, and I have people in my comments on my Instagram saying, nah, it, he's not going at Cole. He's going at Drake. I, I don't know how much clearer it gets that he he's going at the both of them. To me, fuck sneak dissing, first person shooter. I hope they, they, they came with three switches. I crash out like fuck rap. This Melly Mel if I had to. Um, you know, I, I think Mel says some stuff about Kendrick. Mel, Mel hates on, on everybody. But again, he he's just painting the picture like he's just not being diplomatic. Like if he had to diss Melly Mel, he would. Like Melly Mel is a pioneer forefather. So this is just Kendrick talking about how far he's willing to go. Um, I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos. It's up. You know, another just ill line. If he walk around with that stick, it ain't 3K. That's hard. You know, Andre walking around with the flute, with the stick. Um, but it ain't Andre 3K. Um, think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. Motherfuck the big three. It's just big me. Again, another line in the sand. Like, you know, again, this goes back to Cole. You know, feel like the big three, like we started the league. Kendrick is saying, nah, fuck that. It's just me. It ain't no three. It's me. And then whoever wants smoke. So, you know, you got to respect it. Um, I'm really like that. Your best work is a light pack. Prince outlived Mike Jack. 
you know, I think it's that conversation of Drake and Kendrick are both artists for sure. Drake is 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 more pop with it. Like it's the Prince and Mike Jackson comparison. Um, both super successful, both super influential. You know, Michael had more pop success. Prince was more critically acclaimed and went against the system. Michael went against the system too. When you know his whole thing with Sony and the publishing, and you know Mike Mike wasn't no no punk with it. But you know Kendrick is playing on what the perception of Prince and Mike Jack is. The perception is, and I'm not saying I agree with this, is that Prince is the real artist and Mike Jack was the pop product. You know, I, I think that's where he's going with it. Um, and and him versus Drake, um, you know, Prince was a little more artistic, I guess is what they're saying. Um, dope line, though. I don't entirely agree with it. I get what he's saying, though. I get where he's going there. It's a dope line. It's a dope correlation. Again, drawing the line in the sand. But, you know, for all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. He going to see Pet Cemetery. That, again, the gun imagery, the K, the nines, K9, dogs, for all the dogs, another direct shot. At, at Drake and the album, you know, for all the dogs, which Cole was on. I, I mean, Drake gets the bulk of this, it seems like. But um, he's definitely coming at Cole, too. I don't think he's shying away from Cole. All right, so we got to ask ourselves what happens next, right? Like, where do we go from here? I think what Kendrick did on Like That draws a line in the sand, sets a tone, um, saying that he wants all the smoke. And, you know, th this won't go like, like, there's going to be a response. So, I think Drake and Cole end up responding separately. I don't think they link up for this. I think there's too much coordination that has to happen. I, I think Cole is done with his leg of the, the tour, so they're not together every night. I just think there's too much coordination. I, I don't think this ends up like, you know, you know I love comic books if you watch them. Um, Captain America Civil War, the scene where both Winter Soldier and, and Captain America are beating up on Iron Man and, and Iron Man's fighting them back. And I don't think this ends up that. I think Cole responds on his own time, you know, and, you know, I, th I think that response is going to be different. And here's the other thing. I don't believe I don't think anybody's on the clock. I never believed in that. I never believed. you know, it's funny. Drake kind of. I mean, that existed if you think of, of the locks and versus beans, kiss versus beans, mixtape days, back and forth were definitely flying like pretty fast and furiously. But, you know, in this era, you know, when Drake went against Meek Mill, um, you know, gave y'all three days where y'all at. Like he dropped charge up then back to back. Like like this concept of being on the clock, I don't believe in. I, I just think that this look, you can't take two years to respond to it, but I think the diss just has to be potent. I think if you make a memorable diss record years from now, nobody is going to be like, well, he took three weeks to make it. Yo, that came a month later. Nah, if it's dope, it's dope. So I think any response here just has to be dope. So, you know, I don't, I don't believe, I, I don't think we're on the clock. I don't think it's 48 hours. We've seen that with like Nikki and, and Megan. And, and I, I think Nikki rushed the response. Like, I, I think you make the right record. Because time will tell. When you look back in on time, you won't remember the time that it took for that record to drop. You know, look, I think Cole is rapping at a high level, a super high level right now. The fall off is coming. You know, I'm pretty sure he's excited about Dreamville. There's a lot of energy around it. So it's the perfect platform to to debut something or give that energy. And he's going to have everybody behind him. But, you know, I, I think Cole's response is going to be more measured, more methodical more um thought out and you know that's also because i think they have a, a, a him and dot had a relationship so you know I, I don't know if it's just going to be like the dozens you know i don't know if we're going to get like an ether record from cole like we might get something a little more psychological um something more heartfelt but venomous because cole ain't no punk and like i say he's rapping at a high level um drake I, you know I, I don't know what drake does i i feel like the drake Response might come in the form of a freestyle, might come like a little quicker. It, look, Drake Drake is battle tested. I mean, he's been through it with Meek. He's been through it with Pusha. He's been through it with Common. Like, Drake has been in these moments, I think, 
a lot of times Drake lives for these moments, these competitive moments. I I, I don't think Drake backs down from this. I, you know, I, you know, I think he tried to play diplomatic. I think a lot of the, the, the smoke from Kendrick, he's, he's been trying to deflect. Some people call it duck and smoke maybe, but, but Drake is also well thought out, you know, and, and methodical. Um, and he'll respond kind of on his time. Again, that push T Drake thing dragged out for years. If you really listen to the records, um, and the little shots going back and forth, but I think Drake responds to this too. I, you know, I just, I just think Kendrick dropped something so pronounced that you can't ignore it. Now I'm going to say this about like that. I think the verse is fire. I think like, wow, like the verse is incredible. I didn't love the beat. I'm going to be super honest. I, I, I didn't love the beat on like, like I, li- I like the references. Like, you know, there's a little run DMC reference in there. Like, um, a little like no idea, no ideas original from Nas, you know, but th- that comes from original sample. Um, you know, that the, there was a little the easy E obviously for the West coast. There was a lot of different dope references in that beat, but I didn't love that. Like that beat. I didn't love like how all the ingredients came together. It wasn't my favorite beat versus fire. Um, so, you know, I, but Kendrick clearly like dropped the bomb. Like they got to respond. Um, it's, it's just it's just very clear um, who he was talking to. You know, I, I don't know that these guys leave this unchecked for too long. So, you know, we're going to wait and see. Maybe I'll do another one of these. Maybe we'll just do it on Instagram like I've been doing my short videos. But I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Like, it's what I love to do. You know, I'm in a place now where, you know, I've, I've been privileged, I think, for most of my career to have a company back anytime I was on camera, be it MTV, be it Genius, be it Amazon. And that and that was great. Um I really respect the guys out here who are live streaming, who are doing it themselves. And I don't know where this is gonna go. Uh, like this might look different, you know, look a little raw, look a little refined, but we're gonna build something. But at the end of the day, it's about the conversations we could have together. It's about our love for the music. It's about how we could break this down. It's about how we could build each other up. That's why I'm really doing these videos. That's why you won't see me. Look, this one's spicy, but it's still about music and, and, and battles in, in hip hop are an important thing. You, you, you won't catch me doing these things about who's dating who or who slept with who. or Like for me, it has to be rooted in the music. That's what I'm passionate about. I know that's what y'all are passionate about. So um, leave whatever comments you have. I, I like and subscribe, I guess. Um, I'm in the comments too, you know. We could debate this. We could talk this back and forth all day. But I appreciate y'all checking this out.